Why the two-minute rule doesn't work for adults with ADHD, explained by Linda Walker. One of the strategies that really does not work for uh, most people, but definitely not for people with ADHD, is that two-minute rule. The two-minute rule says if a task, if you're doing something and a task comes up that will only take two minutes, you, uh, you should drop what you're doing and do that two-minute task. And the challenge with that is, first of all, it plays to your one of your weaknesses, which is the estimation of time. A lot of people struggle with estimating how long tasks take to complete. So you're thinking it's two minutes, but it's more than likely, you know, five, 15, 20 minutes. You're also having to prioritize and you're, you're actually not even prioritizing because you're prioritizing based on what just came up instead of what's the most impactful thing you could be doing right now. Um, it also means that after you finish that so-called two-minute uh, thing, you then have to remember to go back to uh, what you were doing before, which a lot of my clients tell me they completely forget. They, they don't go back. And as a result, they find out at the last minute that they haven't completed something they had, they had to do, and they're constantly running after themselves. One of the challenges that most people, and I, and I think this is one thing that you want to, to take note of, is that Every time we move from one task to the next, to the next, we are adding transition time. We all do that. You have to kind of pull yourself away from whatever you were doing, change the gears in your in your mind, and then move on to the next task. Well, that takes time, and that could be as much as ten to fifteen, even twenty minutes from one task to the next to, to the next. So this multitasking idea does not work either. When you're multitasking, you're adding time between tasks that, that is wasted. It's totally wasted time. The better strategy is when these types of things come up, and unfortunately, that two-minute rule, that the two-minute tasks or so-called two-minute tasks come from the outside. People show up at your door. Somebody calls you. Uh, an, an email pops up. Or you have an idea or you realize that, oh, my gosh, I forgot something. Instead of stopping what you had planned to do, and hopefully you've been planning based on what's most impactful, you keep um, a catch-all list. I have a little moleskin book that's about five inches by, well, I don't know, seven or eight inches, in which I write anything that comes up to, for me when I'm doing something that requires a fair bit of focus. When I've determined that this is what I'm going to be working on, instead of trying to keep it in my mind, because we know that one of the challenges is that uh, with anybody is that we're trying to remember this. We say, okay, well, I won't, if I don't do it right away, I'm going to have to try to remember it while I'm working on something else. And that's not great either because we burn so much more energy worrying about what we haven't done and are afraid of forgetting. And that's why a lot of people jump and do the task instead of actually um, just writing it down and saying, I'm going to do it later. Now, of course, if you're going to put it in a, a, a list, whether that's a moleskin notebook like I have or my husband, my husband who's a, an adhd -er, I am a, the member of an ADHD family. Dwayne uh, uses Evernote, but for me, it's a. Uh, if I use Evernote, I end up, you know, falling into some traps. So I stay away from technology when I'm doing tasks that require a fair bit of focus. So, the the important part is though, you have to find, you have to have certain times during either the day or the week, depending on how often these types of tasks uh, come up. Um, to go back and review what you've written in your uh, catch-all list so that you don't let anything fall through the wayside.